Hey, what's up everybody? Kenan here, and today we're gonna be talking about the radiated tortoise. These guys are a prized possession for me and many other tortoise keepers. They're a very endangered species, and today I'm gonna share with you how I got these animals and what I have to do to keep them happy, healthy, and making babies here at Camp Kenan. Stick around. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. So just off the east coast of Africa is a large island called Madagascar. And on Madagascar there are many different types of animals that can't be found anywhere else. In fact, Madagascar is considered a bio hotspot because of all the diversity of wildlife there. And that's where the beautiful and intriguing radiated tortoise comes from. And it gets its name from these radiating lines that come out off of their scutes. Now these are highly variable, many different animals. As you can see, the one behind me has some different patterns here. Okay, whereas this one, plenty of different radiating lines. Some are a little bit more yellow, some are a little bit more black. But you can just see how gorgeous this animal is. And it's because of that beauty that has caused this animal to decline in its native range. And unfortunately, in Madagascar, they have government that isn't very secure. So they change leaders very quickly. Uh, unfortunately for the animals and the people there, they don't often get looked after the way that they should. So what happens is because of the beauty of the radiated tortoise, its shell, uh, and, and the poverty that these people are living in, um, it's like finding little gold bouillons in the forest. Um, so the radiated tortoise is actually an endangered animal. However, it is not the most endangered tortoise on the island of Madagascar. That unfortunate title goes to the plowshare tortoise. But the radiated tortoise is definitely being exploited for its shell, for the pet trade, for the food trade, and for the traditional Chinese medicine trade. A lot of these animals are illegally smuggled into China, and that's why they meet their end, uh, well, unfortunately, either in a medicine vial or in a soup pot. Uh, here in the United States, they have set up something called a Species Survival Plan. And what that does is it basically allows zoos to work with private keepers to keep tabs on the captive radiated tortoises in the United States. It's a really cool plan because basically everyone has a group of animals that's participating in it and they have a stud book, they keep records on these animals, and this way we can track exactly who has them and where they're going. It's legal to own these animals in the United States if you buy them within the state they're produced. So what that means is I live in Florida. If I bred these animals, I can sell them legally in Florida. I just need a, a license that proves the buyer is actually in Florida, or I can sell them across state lines if I had a captive wildlife permit and the, uh, the buyer has a captive wildlife permit. So they really keep tabs on this animal. And the truth is, this animal is doing very well in captivity. They breed well in captivity. Uh, as you can see, the, the animals that I got here at Camp Kennan are uh, basically a breeding loan. They do not belong to me, but I'm fostering them. And it's such an amazing honor to be able to do that because someone has entrusted me with their private collection so that I can help them breed, give them a big space, a lot of area, lots of different foods uh, to see if these guys will acclimate and start breeding as they did. Now these animals did come from Florida, so they are used to our climate, but in the wild where they're from, they do live in a more dry environment, but they're very adaptable. And so in that dry environment, they're what I like to call a grassland species, like your sulcatas, like your leopard tortoises, your southern European tortoises, you know, your Greeks, your Hermans, your marginateds. These animals are specialized in eating leaves and grasses and different weeds. So they don't like a high fruit content. So you have to be careful not to overfeed them fruit. And you'll see their shells, really the typical tortoise shell, very high dome. Let's pull this one over here. This is a beauty. Oh, and they're pretty heavy. They're a medium sized tortoise. They're definitely in the mid range. They're not as big as a galop, obviously, or an aldabra. However, they are a larger species of tortoise. And you can see this is a little gal right here. Oh, yep, it's a little, little lady. And man, is she heavy. But look at the beautiful, beautiful scales on her legs. Very, very nice animal. And boy, I have to tell you guys, 
Working with these has been a dream of mine. So we just got them in. I'm going to basically tweak the enclosure a little bit more. You can see some of the guys already nibbling on the grass and different cactus that I have planted throughout the enclosure. And if you've been following along here at Camp Kennan on the different shows, you know that I really enjoy creating nice habitats for the animals. That's what every one of you guys should be out there striving to do. Whether you're up north, whether you're down south, you really want to get these animals outdoors because this is what they love love they want to behave like tortoises if we keep them indoors all the time they're not going to get the full range of behaviors that they should be experiencing as a tortoise so basically you know lots of room lots of different grasses different leaves for them to eat we have a nice one come here look at this this is really cool guys come on don't be shy come over here i just love watching the tortoises walk around you just see how beautiful that animal is as the sun's shining on it as it explores its new enclosure these are all animals that were raised up in captivity, if you can believe that. And the gentleman who raised them up did a fantastic job. Very minimal pyramiding. Uh, they're just in great health and they reproduce regularly every single year. So it's, a, it's an honor for me to actually have someone trust me this much uh, with their private animals. Uh, these animals, like I mentioned, do belong to the species survival plan. So we're going to be keeping tabs on what they lay, what female has laid who, what eggs. It's, it's kind of a little bit of work to make sure that we keep track of the offspring. So this way we know that we have what they would call an assurance colony uh, in the United States that perhaps one day if things settle down uh, politically in Madagascar, potentially we will have the animals in captivity to repatriate them into the wild. And to me, uh, that's just the biggest goal. Conservation isn't just about doing work in situ or in the country of origin. It's about doing what you can in the United States or where you live to make sure these animals can be repatriated. Uh, we're very lucky, you know, to live in a country that, for the most part, has a stable government. I know your parents or some of you may not think that's the case, but at the end of the day, things are pretty chill right here in the United States. And we are able to work with some amazing animals. So it's just not the case in some other parts of the world. And one other thing I'd like to say is when you want to help animals, man, I used to, used to think, ah, I don't want to help people. People can help themselves. But the reality is some people are in a lot of trouble. And if you want to save animals, you got to help people. You got to lift them up out of poverty. And so that's why it's kind of important to keep an ear out what's going on with these different human rights violations in some of the countries where animals you love are. Because if we can't help the people, we're not going to be able to help the animals. we got to stabilize things. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Camp Cannon. Here's some radiated tortoises moving around their new enclosure. We're going to have plenty more information on these animals as we move forward. We're even going to meet some breeders down the road that are going to help me figure out what I need to do to make these guys have lots of babies. I'll see you again soon.